Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Stali Salasonic, a.k.a. Stally, a.k.a. the man that knows what the people want. So, in my last video, uh, I was kind of slacking on the mixing and the laying out. So, in this video, I'm going to be finishing up this beat. Basically, laying it out how I wanted, I want the progression to go. And I'm going to be putting everything to the mixer putting the required EQs, compressions, effects, and that's going to be it. If you guys want me to show you guys a mastering tutorial, that's going to be a totally different video if this video isn't too long. But uh, yeah, let's get into it.
so it's not letting me do that so basically a layout of the beat now I'm gonna go in put this on a mixer actually it's already on the mixer tracks but uh, that's one one and I'll put this on two actually there's something already on two try the reverse pianos uh, Chords, random melody. There's nothing on this, so it doesn't need to be here. Um, and yeah, let's go into the mixer. And all right, uh, 
I don't know how long this video is right now, but uh, it's about 10 minutes, all right. So I got like 20 minutes to really do this. So for the pianos, I'm just gonna use simple stuff. We're gonna use Fruity Parametric EQ. And I'm just gonna EQ it and kind of just get it to sound how I hear it in my head. And that's what you should be aiming to do as well, you feel me? It doesn't matter what kind of curves you use, it doesn't matter what kind of uh, settings you use, as long as you get the sound you want. thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in uh, a compressor and I'm gonna be using the M compressor from Melody Audio this is a free compressor and I like it because of the, the visual aspect of it <laughs> After I compress it, usually I just I bring it back up to zero and limit it. This plugin has a, a, a setting that maximizes to zero. I just don't like using that because um, I, I don't always get it right using that. And now after this, if you want, you could add some reverb, you could add whatever, you feel me? I'm just going to add some reverb on channel 14, just fruity reverb. I'm going to use the cathedral preset. Make it a little bit more stereo. And turn it down. I don't want any dry signal in it, so all we're going to be hearing is reverb. The next thing is going to be the reverse pianos. Uh, this shouldn't be too hard because they're all kind of in the higher frequency range. I'll use a high pass to just kind of sweep the low frequencies off. And I'm figuring out that around 600 hertz is where I like it. Uh, it still kind of has those low present, uh, low frequency sounds in there, but uh, I don't really want them as much. So I'm going to compress this as well. And the thing about compression is uh, you got to know how to hear it and know when it's too much, when it's too little, uh, how to get the exact sound that you want out by compressing, you feel me? But yeah.
bring this up to zero. But I'm also gonna put some uh, delay on there just to kind of make it more trippy. It just kind of sounds bare the way it is. Valhalla Supermaster for that and last thing I just put a limiter on there next thing I do is just kind of balance the volume between the two of them I just kind of roll off the, the end right here. I don't actually take too much off. Is I'm just trying to shave that sub frequency. Because depending on how much you kind of turn it down, it affects the phase differently. And I, uh, hold up. Phase rotation. So you can kind of see it changes the phase slightly. And I'm, I, I didn't use the you know take note of that until I realized that sometimes my kick and my edo is just don't hit you feel me and they hit before I mix them but I didn't really understand why they would sound good in solo and not in solo and not good together but it's usually a lot of face stuff So basically I'm turning up the phase on this part and it's canceling out the frequency. That's basically what I guess EQ does, but yeah. to compress it. I want to compress the kick but it's peaking above zero so I'm just gonna put a soft clipper on there just to tame it a little bit sounds good I don't actually have to limit it cuz I don't know the compressor kind of limited it for me but uh, yeah I usually don't add things that I don't have to next thing I'm gonna work on are the hi-hats and typically there's nothing in this frequency range that you really need in your hi-hats or open hi-hats so but I don't like to cut it too much because 
kind of takes away the, the natural sound of the hi-hat. <laughs> And after that, I just compress it. Uh, actually doing some work on that one. thing is the open hi-hats uh, and it's kind of the same story with the with the hi-hats except uh, you can add probably reverb on this or it's really up to you I don't want to use a high pass on this because I still want some of that in case you know I kind of want to shape it a little bit I think I'm gonna do much to this snare because I kind of like how it sounds. It already sounds pretty processed, but I am gonna turn down some of those high frequency uh, rattles because it does have an open high in there. Press it. Actually, I may have to cut some of this low end out just because of how thick it sounds. And you see how, like, I'm cutting it at 160, but the slope goes all the way down to 100. Understanding your slope can actually save, actually, can you know change the quality of your mix just by using EQ and compression you can get you can dial in a pretty good mix you feel me
going in and kind of separating the like the field so I can hear everything on its own when I try to focus on it. Although everything, you know, should be balanced, you feel me? gonna be the the 808 uh, and I'm gonna let y'all in on a little secret before I actually knew how to mix 808s I used to leave 808s to be the last thing I actually touched so I'm gonna I'm gonna just do that to give you guys an idea of why I did that Another thing I like to do is put my drums on a bus. I'm not going to turn on the bus yet because I'm not mixing the bus yet. But uh, I'm going to explain to you why I always leave my 808s last. Uh, before I knew how to mix 808s, I always had this idea in my head. And I've always had this since I really started making good beats. Is that if a sound is good you probably don't need to do a lot to it to make it fit into the beat. You feel me? Except maybe your 808's out of key, you know what I'm saying? You gotta kinda put it in key or stuff like that, but typically, sounds are made to fit in. You feel me? And just like that, I used to leave my 808's just routed to the mixer and nothing on there. You feel me? And I'm gonna show y'all how that sounds and I'm gonna also mix it just so y'all have an idea of how I actually mix these. So it sounds pretty good on its own just like that so, but um, one thing that I realized that I like I needed to do <clears throat> is I needed to roll off some of the subs. Like eventually I realized this because like I started hearing my mixes in cars and started hearing it like it was pretty pretty low hand e uh, heavy, you feel me? And what I really just do for that is I turn on the high pass filter. I, I reset the I don't know what this is, like the slope, I guess. And I just drag it all the way back. So it's 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 not even it's just cutting off whatever is right there, you feel me? And I use that to kind of shape the low end to give it the right feel. And other than that, uh I may cut the highs, I may boost some lows, but typically this is the only thing I used to do mixing wise after I figured out Okay, I don't really need to do much to the 808. Okay, now I need to do a little something to tame that low end. And this is what I did, and it, it, it just worked, okay? And you can kind of see the frequency where it rolls off. You want to kind of match 
the slope. is the sub the low end right here uh, don't forget you are doing stuff with the phase and when it's a high pass it's a more abrupt cut you feel me so you you have to really be careful what frequency you put this on and what slope you're using <laughs> Even in the lower frequencies, it doesn't sound like I'm actually taking much out because the, it's still everything's still in phase. So after I do this, uh, basically I just kind of level it out. That's basically it for the actual mixing of the channels and now we're gonna go into the the drum bus I would I would strongly recommend you use a channel strip plugin for this and there's a lot of channel strip plugins out there um, I have this I have the channel V and I have loaded and they both work amazing and I would really recommend you use a channel strip plugin for your bus because uh, I don't know whenever I put another EQ on a bus like sp specifically a fruity EQ I usually hear a lot of phase issues it's usually maybe out of phase or I may have to use a linear phase and I usually don't always like switching between uh, linear phase and natural phase so uh, I just kind of use a channel strip plugin it can happen with a channel strip plugin too though so just try to listen to your mix and figure it out you feel me and I can hear it already with this channel strip plugin except uh, I know why it's doing that uh, just it's the EQ all I have to do is turn off the EQ section of the strip and I can still manipulate the sound. It's just I'm not going to have all the bands of EQ. I only have a low boost, a high boost, and high cut and a low cut. So I feel like that's enough for me though on the, on the bus. drum bus and then I'm mixing the volume the bus kind of to the center 
I usually don't always do this, but uh, I found it, you know, kind of helps my drum sound a little bit cleaner too. Uh, and this isn't exactly my plugin chain. I'm just kind of taking y'all through the mental process that I go through whenever I'm mixing. But to me, this sounds pretty good and uh, I don't feel like changing anything. <laughs> frequencies are kind of loud though. I'm gonna turn down the clap, turn down the snare. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> basically gonna be it for this beat uh, if you guys want me to make a mastering video please leave a like leave a comment and subscribe and I will I will do mastering tutorials and I'll walk y'all through the processes of how I, I used to master how I do master why I do the things I do and why they sound good, at least to me, you feel me? And a lot of people I've worked with, you know, they, and I never got any complaints so far. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the video on that note. And please, please don't forget to subscribe. All right, peace.